Alright, good morning guys. And we're just headed out for the day. Uh, trying to get this halibut finished up. Yesterday was pretty slow fishing. Um, it's been a week or so since we've been out. I guess actually about 10 days. So The fish, uh, I guess they moved on. They kind of set back in the same spots. Um, just to see what was there, I guess. Didn't really have any other any other spots to really try right there. So I wish that we would have put a few in town um, on the other side of the reef, but we didn't. But anyways, um, yeah, fishing was kind of slow, so we're headed up here off of uh, East Cape today, just north of town. So it's about an hour and a half run, hour and 45 minutes to get over here. Um, it's starting to get light out. A little bit behind here, but shouldn't matter too much. We'll have our gear in the water here in the next half hour or so. So we're just kind of headed up that way, up around the corner here. Matt's out here chopping some bait. Get the last of our hooks baited up. Yep, got about a top of the half bait, so. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the tides are pretty big here, so kind of thinking that, well, we had our gear kind of laying up on top of the edge last time on some high spots, and it was pretty good, but the tides were real small and light, so. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's a good chance that uh, that the current, you know, on these big tides push, push these fish back off the edge. And hopefully they're just kind of laying at the bottom on the bank. So uh, that's what we're going to find out today. That's where we're going to lay our gear. Fingers crossed. Yeah. I don't think we had anything yesterday deeper than about 65 fathoms. Um, and that kind of seemed like where the fish were that we caught. Yeah, that was, they were biting, was in the 60s. Fighting on the deeper stuff. Yeah. Like our, our first, uh, well, our second set, the first couple of tubs had like four or five fish right away on, on literally the first shot or two. And it looked pretty good and then it shallowed up after that and it, it pretty much dried up. So yep. I think we had a, a little over 500 pounds yesterday, which yeah, um, we were hoping for a little more than that. Quite a bit more actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're hoping to get this in two days, not three or four, but we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, as fishing, we can't, uh, we can only do our best, so. Just want to get it done. It's getting cold out here. Yeah, get a little, get a little snow up in the hills here. But uh, yeah, today's going to be real nice. West 10 today, it's beautiful out here. It'll be real nice up around the corner. It was actually pretty blustery yesterday. Um, the forecast was northwest 15, but I think it was a little over 20. Yeah. And, uh, uh, nice uh, swell rolling around Long Island there. Yeah, it was a little breezy yesterday. Laid, it laid down in the evening when we were hauling some, but it could have been a bit nicer. It was just cold. The wind makes it cold. All right, well. back in here where it's warm. Yeah, so get some gear shot out of here and uh, we'll bring you back in a while. Okay, well, I guess we're we're at the spot here, so we'll get some uh, get some some hooks in the water here. Um, I just use a, a hailer to talk to Matt here, so it's got a talk back feature on it, so I can hear him. If something happens, he can shout at me or let me know what's going on back there, so. All right, go ahead and trailer. Probably looking for 70 fathoms here. So this set should end up down in about 60 fathoms or so. So I'm just gonna have them put a extra 15 fathoms of line on, something like that. In case it does drift a little bit deeper, we should be covered. 
tide's still ebbing so it could push it off the edge a, a touch but it probably won't go too far so we just use the same line that's on our reel for buoy line we have it marked every 25 fathoms um, the first mark and the last mark at 25 and 75 fathoms are a yellow tracer and then the center one at 50 fathoms which is halfway into the shot is marked with a red one so we know where we're at it makes uh it makes it pretty easy to to get that set up and um know much how much line that we're putting out so you just tossed over the birch line there <clears throat> So it just has orange tubing on it, just traces. So get, let that get stretched out here. Some sash weights. Way down the line. A rocky area. Yeah. Straightened out here. Going in circles. that bird line get stretched out here and we'll be in about the right spot. Yeah, let her fly. And I'll just put a mark here. You need to put marks on here when I'm setting gear so I can come back and know what kind of depths that we're in as we're fishing. Um, as we start to to get some fish if we get a little slug of fish a little hot spot there we can come in and take a look at the chart and know where where we were at and also an idea how deep we were and that kind of helps helps your decision making process when you go to set back speed up here for a second i just gotta put my little wedge in here for my throttle it's got a detent on this so neutral forward and reverse have a detent but if you're just a little bit sped up past that detent it likes to pop back into idle <clears throat> so i just put that in there and it'll hold it we'll speed up a little bit probably about four knots and that keeps up fine that speed so thoughts for the day well we got squid uh, cod and pollock. So this is our long line setup. This is just a line guide right here to keep this stuff from going all over the place as you turn it and surging up and down in the swells. You can see you just slip your line in there to pull it in and out. Works real well. A lot of guys just have a table with a line guide that you snap on gear. They don't use this bazooka what we call this, a bazooka or a shotgun. So I'll have two guys right here to set. They won't use this, you just snap it on. Um, it works fine, just a little more uh, chance of getting entangled and getting a hook in your hand. Um, yep. This way it's, you really protect yourself like this and gives us a peace of mind when we're just fishing together with just a couple of us on, on board that the guy working back here is not gonna encounter any problems and, get hooked and possibly yeah. drug overboard. I suppose for us we have short leaders too. Yeah. Like people that have longer ones will throw their hook back a little bit. Yep. To make sure they're clear of it. But, but you know they still whip around and stuff. Yeah they do whip around. Yeah. And uh, you know that long leader you always have a chance of getting your your hand in a bite too. It's just, I mean the same as getting a hook in your hand. Yeah. It, it, it can grab you and yank you over it. Yeah, so he's just snapping away up here. Um, yeah, I got about 20 foot spacing, or yeah. 25 foot spacing actually. These are basically just spring loaded snaps, so you, you just squeeze them with your hand, and then the line goes up here into this groove. There's enough tension on there that it won't slide down the line. Under most circumstances, um, 
if you get hung up in a rock or something, you know, you'll it'll it'll pull them down and stack them up. But uh, but for the most part, it doesn't. I'll pop back in here and make sure we're somewhat on course. Oh, that's looking pretty good. here yeah hopefully there's some fish here and uh, we stay out of the skates and the spiny dogfish the little sharks looking good yeah hopefully this will get yeah so this bird line does help um, normally these birds would be dropping in right here. Some of them ignore it, but but it, it does help kind of keep them away. Just a lot, gives your your line a chance to to sink a little bit, and then they're less inclined to try and dive down there and, and grab that bait. That was a sea link that just went through. We have those on each end of every 100 fathom shot, which allows us to connect and disconnect our, our line. So when we get ready to end the set, we'll just go up to that sea link and I'll tell Matt how much buoy line to put on and, and he'll uh, act accordingly. And then at the end of it, we just unclip it from the other one and tie in a buoy and we're good to go. Might have just seen a mark go out right there. If you were watching closely. That was 25 fathoms with 25 fathoms that shot out. Yeah. Pretty simple setup, guys. Yeah, easy to work. Yeah, easy for two guys to, to do this. Um, baiting up and cleaning up the gear is really easy. Cold out here. Yeah. It's a little northwest 15, by the way, or, uh, by the looks of it. West 15. Yeah. A little swell coming in here, which is pretty normal for this spot. That'll be a nice day, anyways. The wind's just coming off the the, uh, the island over here, triplets. So. We're in the lee here, more or less. It should be a pretty nice day. Getting towards the end of the set here. Uh, just kind of watching for a sea link to go out. And once it does, I'll just let Matt know. Should I let him know now? So I think this will be the last one, okay? Yeah, I'll probably be looking for 70 or so, okay? So I'm just kind of giving them a heads up of how much buoy line we'll probably want. And uh, now I'm just watching for the sea link to go out. And then when it does, I'll just start slowing down because he's going to want to put the anchor on. Yeah, got her. So that was the sea link right there. So I'll just start, I'll slow down now because he's going to want to put this anchor on in the first 25 fathoms of this shot. And uh, I just give him a little bit extra. Yeah, he just hollered at me to let me know to slow down. So I just pulled her out of gear. And then he'll just tie a knot in the line. I'm not really sure what this knot's called. A few people have commented on it and with ideas what it is. It's, it's nothing I've been able to find so far. We just call it a figure eight. Similar to a figure eight, but it's it's not the same. But it works really well for this application. And anchor goes over. I'll mark it. And uh, mark the uh, the depth. And then that way I can enter it in the logbook. 
on both ends and also the lat long of where these sets start and end. And I'll just speed up for a minute here while we pull the rest of this buoy line off the reel. And then he'll attach an anchor and we'll pull in the buoy, uh, the bird line and head over to the next set. Here, slip her in reverse for a couple of seconds and slow us down. Retrieve our bird line. So Matt always just takes a couple wraps around this to keep the line from paying out when he's tying the knot or detaching it from the other other shot to tie in the buoys and that way he doesn't lose the end or have to try and struggle to hold it. Just two or three wraps on this post right here and it ain't going nowhere. Uh oh, got a tangle. <laughs> yeah, well, some nice looking bait, some fresh cod, pollock, some weird giant squid that we got from the plant. Yeah, they uh, rounded up us uh, some free bait, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it actually catches anything. It does. Does it? Yeah, I, I uh, saw a big halibut on one, actually. Oh, sweet. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, it was uh, pretty weird. At first I thought it was an octopus. And it was like, man, yeah. <laughs> this is a really weird octopus. It had like the body, the tube of the body. Yeah, the mantle. Stuff in there. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like, the heck? What's going on here? <laughs> so, yeah. The octopus had a, a big dome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we carry on, I guess. All right, guys, we're about to start hauling our set here. There's the buoys. It's been four hours, so yeah. fingers crossed, get some halibut action here. Yeah, usually these edges fish pretty quick, so we want to get in it before dark at any rate, so that's uh, the allowable time that we have to do it. Yep, don't want you know, any the flea action or anything like that. Yeah, the last one we'll probably end up hauling a little bit of it in the dark anyway. Yeah, so, nice afternoon anyways. Wind laid down again, kind of up and down here. Yeah. But absolutely gorgeous out. And, uh, let's see what happens here. Yeah, Dad came up with a new idea for a vantage point, so hopefully you guys enjoy. Yeah, I thought we'd put you guys out here on the pole and try and get a different angle. Hopefully it doesn't vibrate around too much. Yep. We'll see. We shall see. Okay. Well, I guess we'll gear up and get hauling. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan.
guys well here we are again beautiful afternoon stretches way out there but doesn't really capture the water or faces so enjoy the cell phone perspective hey. yep <clears throat> this works out and it looks like there's not too much uh, shaking around maybe we'll get a, a longer stick for next year here comes anchor No bait coming back, so that's a good sign. But it had enough time. That is them over there, huh? We're just talking about a boat down here, about a mile and a half away. Got a set of buoys over there. We were laying out our gear. We didn't see any boats around or their buoys this morning, but there it was when we were set. We should have enough distance between us, but just hoping that we didn't lay over the top of their set. It was common courtesy to tie a guy back if you need to cut his line, but that's not necessarily what always happens. them if I'm not sure if they're legal or not. If they're hooked well, it's usually not a need to gaff them. And if they're marginal whether they're legal or not, we don't. We try and minimize the amount of stress we put on them and damage we do to them.
first tubs go kind of slow because we're no line on the reel yet. Then it'll speed up as we start to increase the diameter of our reel. During about five or six shots, we'll start speeding up a bit. The first one's always a little slow. Chicken dinner.
Don't they seem closer now? So starfish. I'd say we're fine.
cod fish. Don't want to get down now. Falls off. <laughs> Sucking on the hook. Cute flounder. Quite an unsavory character. <laughs> Literally speaking. Those guys pretty much turn into oatmeal when you cook them. Oh yeah, those guys are going out. when the wind stays down. Yeah. It doesn't take very much of it to make it cold out here.
pre-dawn beta party here. If I don't lose them, he is. Being brave. Living on the edge. <laughs> 